Hi everyone, merhaba, this is Ayşenur Altan. Welcome to Turkish Food and Travel. It's the first day of Ramadan and for the whole month Muslims fast during the day. So the iftar dinner times becomes more festive gatherings for us. I will share a complete iftar menu with you with an Ottoman lentil soup, çeşmi nigar çorbası, köfte with potato and yogurt püree, köfteli patates paçası from the Black Sea region, rice pilav with orzo and an easy walnut filled and semolina coated syrup dessert, cevizli parmak tatlısı. They all are simple dishes with ingredients you can find easily at home but will make a different festive menu. So let's get started. First I'm going to make the köfte balls for the köfteli patates paçası from Kastamonu city. For this I have 300 grams ground beef, one medium sized onion, one clove of garlic. First I'm going to uh, chop the garlic and onion in my food processor you can also grate it if you like but this way is more easier adding the ground beef and quarter teaspoon salt and black pepper and about eight of a teaspoon i can say just a pinch of baking soda the baking soda gives some chiviness to the uh, köfte balls, uh, so we add it in this recipe. Just give it a good mix. Again, you can mix it by hand, just like kneading a dough. And it's ready. Since we don't use any uh, breadcrumbs in our köfte, it is more like a kebab. But uh, if you prefer, you can also make a classical style of uh, Turkish köfte by adding some uh, stale bread in it and uh, mix it mix it with the mixture. Just shape it into small size balls. I'm gonna cover it with a stretch film and let it rest in the fridge. You can make this step in the morning so it will be easier and ready. I have six medium sized potatoes just going to boil it and meanwhile I'm gonna make my çeşmi nigar çorbası. Ottoman style lentil soup with milk sauce. My soup pan is heating and I'm dicing one big size onion. Adding olive oil to my pan about uh, five tablespoons and going to saute the onions first. I saute the onions for about two minutes until I have nice golden color and adding one tablespoon heaped flour, all-purpose flour and going to brown it together a little bit about 30 40 more seconds here is my uh, one cup of washed and drained red lentils and added about four cups hot water adding one teaspoon salt i'm going to cook on low medium heat until the lentils are soft Meanwhile, I'm going to make the sauce for the soup, which is egg yolk, little more than half cup milk, and about one tablespoon or more lemon juice. And the sauce will give a regular lentil soup, kind of a creamy and lemony taste, which will make it very uh, delicious and different at the same time. My lentils are soft in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. I just uh, blend it, puree it with a hand blender. And now going to add the sauce. 
make sure to drizzle some hot water or uh, from the soup to the milk and yolk mixture to heat up a little bit before adding back to the pan so it doesn't curdle uh, I think I didn't film it there and just mix it slowly and cook until it is bubbled again simmering and it's ready to uh, serve we're just gonna make a quick butter sauce before we serve it my soup is almost ready so the main dish is like halfway done I can begin to make my dessert in a small pan I heat it up one cup plus third of a cup sugar and two cups of water just boil for five minutes drop some lemon juice and after two minutes turn off the heat to cool down to speed up the process I just transfer it to another cup for the dough I have 130 grams butter at room temperature half cup semolina for coating two tablespoons for the dough quarter cups sugar teaspoon each baking powder and vanilla half cup walnuts one big size egg and about two cups plus quarter cups flour and I also use fourth of a cup vegetable oil I didn't put it there I'm gonna add it now just going to mix the butter and sugar first for about 30 seconds and here is my vegetable oil quarter cup one egg and semolina before I add the baking powder and vanilla I'm gonna add my uh, flour I added two cups first and give it a mix and if it's too soft uh, you can add more flour in total I had added uh, two cups plus quarter cup but uh, it is better always as I said uh, to add the final half cup gradually until you have nice uh, smooth unsticky playable dough The baking tray I'm using is a little bit smaller than the uh, oven tray so when I pour the syrup it holds it and soaks it better I just uh, mixed a little bit cinnamon about a teaspoon along with some sugar with the walnuts it is optional but gives a nice taste and we are ready to shake just get a little bit bigger than a walnut size dough flatten it with the help of your hand place about a teaspoon of the filling close it and shape it into oval shape lightly dip it to semolina one side and it is ready you can uh, when you close the dough you can just make it like squeezing so it can easily shape and it's ready my oven is preheated to 170 celsius degree i'm gonna cook until it is nice golden color my potatoes are cooked i'm just going to peel them and puree them I suggest uh, you mash the potatoes while they are still hot it was like a bit cold so I had problem uh, mashing them I just grated first and going to keep it on the side until I fry my köfte balls I have medium sized pan just adding about three tablespoons olive oil 
am going to cook my kaftas. Just shake the pan from time to time and cook all sides. You can cover it for a time and cook truly. Transfer the cooked köftes to another plate and in the same pan just add a bit more oil and transfer the potatoes. We will also this way get the taste of the köftes and the uh, oil, the fat coming from it in the potato puree. And here is the sauce that will make the regular potato puree to another level. In a medium sized bowl, I'm mixing two cups of thick yogurt, half teaspoon salt, one egg and two cloves of garlic. And this, my friends, it gives it like a tangy, soury taste coming from the yogurt to your potato puree base which makes everything really different and so powerful in taste. My potato puree is warm. Little by little I'm adding the yogurt sauce and give it a good mix. Again, normally it should be like a silky puree. So it is always better to puree the potato uh, while there it is still hot I just helped it little bit with the hand blender and it's done as a final touch before I assemble everything and put it into the oven I'm making a quick butter sauce and also rice pilaf with orzo on the sides I just melted some butter and olive oil and added about 1 tablespoon tomato paste along with paprika and red pepper flakes. This rice pilaf with orzo is probably our favorite side dish at home and from my childhood too. You can check the links for the recipe. I'm pouring my potato puree, patates pochası, to 9 by 13 inch medium sized pan, deep dish pan. Placing the köfte balls on top. And drizzle the tomato and butter sauce. It's ready to go to oven, just to heat up before serving. Everything is already cooked. You can cook for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, my desserts were done. I waited for 5 minutes and poured the cold syrup over it. It easily soaks the syrup in about half an hour. It is better to wait at least one hour. And after it soaked it completely, you can uh, take out from the syrup or drain the excess syrup because it will be more uh, soft after a while if you don't. As a final touch for my çeşmini gar çorbası, I heated some butter and olive oil, added dried mint, red pepper flakes and paprika. After 30 seconds, with a nice smell coming from the sauce I'm ready to serve all my dishes After pouring the spicy butter sauce over the soup just gently mix it not too much and make sure Every plate has some of the delicious sauce on top. Traditionally, we add some breakfast items to the table 
but this time I only searched dates. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you do, you can support me by sharing and commenting so others can see it. I have many episodes for complete menus. Check the links for more in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in another delicious Turkish food recipes and travel vlogs. Afiyet olsun.